Exactly 10 years ago today, the Seattle Seahawks selected our next guest in the fifth round of the NFL draft, beginning a career that has included five Pro Bowls and a Lombardi Trophy. One of the best corners we've seen in the game of football. The one and only Richard Sherman back on Stephen A's World. How are you, my man? How's everything? It's fantastic. It's fantastic. You know, being a dad, enjoying, enjoying this draft, enjoying, enjoying life. Believe it or not, man, with all that you've accomplished, I actually didn't look forward to having you on the air today just to talk football. I wanted to talk about you because one of the things that I talked about when I started doing this show is I wanted to use this as an opportunity to celebrate some of the great, great things athletes are doing off the court or off the field to play. And when it comes to you, you're involved in a new business venture. I want you to tell America about it right now. Yeah, yeah, I just got named to the board of directors for Enthusiast Gaming. Um, it's trading on the NASDAQ. It's an e-gaming platform. Obviously, e-gaming in its industry in itself is a, is a $180 billion industry now and continuing mm. to grow. They're estimating it to be $300 billion by 2022. It's, it's, it's one of those things that you kind of thought, you know, when you started to talk about video games as a kid, you're like, man, this, this would be cool to make money doing this. You know, play, I can play video games my whole life. That'd be crazy <laughs> and uh and to be to have the opportunity to to be on this board and to to help develop this platform you know with 300 plus users um each month you know i mean it's it, we're, we're engaging you know we have the influencers we have the teams we have the social aspect i mean we're able to to engage these fans with the the players uh, because it's just a different game you know you're not seeing you're not seeing the 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 consumers on like Facebook and, and engaging in that. A lot of these kids, especially kids that are under 18, are are trying to find these gamers, trying to find these influencers, watching them play. Mm -hmm. I mean, kids dang near would rather watch play than play. Mm -hmm. And uh so I just really wanted to get into that space. So I'm just thankful for enthusiasts allowing me to get in. You know, I, I think I'm the first athlete to be named of to a board of directors of, of a company. Mm -hmm. I mean I think maybe Jordan but uh, it's, it's been <laughs> yeah. a cool opportunity, and it's, it's fun. R Richard, how did this all come about? Did they approach you? Is this something that just, I, I mean, explain to us how it all connected. How did you come about? How did this opportunity come forward for you? Well, well, I, I, I initially worked with Luminosity Gaming, and that's, that's the company that I got on the jacket right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it was just a gaming platform. They own the Seattle Surge. They own a few other teams and a few other leagues. And Enthusiast is the parent company of that. Um, and mm -hmm. so I had done a ton with Luminosity, you know, every, you know, doing streams, um, doing things for charity, just really growing the brand and, 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 and just pushing it. And it got me noticed by uh, the CEO, Adrian. And mm -hmm. we had many conversations between he, myself, and my marketing guy, Mitch. And it just was the right fit, especially with the company growing. They have a billion-dollar cap rate. Mm -hmm. um, they're coming to the NASDAQ. There was no other Americans on the board, and they felt like it was a perfect fit, and I agree. Anybody connected to the sports world has been marveling at you for years, not just because of your exploits on the field, but the level of intellect that you have obviously been in possession of. You went to Stanford on an athletic scholarship, but obviously you had big-time grades at the Stanford University. This is what you brought to the table. So people used to talk about your intellect, how you process things, just the way that you carried yourself and what have you. When we talk to young kids out there, and, you're, and a whole bunch of people in the world are watching you, and you talk about the importance of cultivating and networking with resources and things of that nature. Speak to that for a second and how that's helped you elevate to this point, not just on the field of play, but in the working world, in the business world. I, th I think that's the most important opportunity. I mean, it's, it's, they always say it. It's not what you know, it's who you know. You know, mm -hmm. and, and you don't really grasp that and you don't really understand that until, until it hits you, until you're out in the world and you're like, man, you're getting calls from these people. And it's like, man, I, I mean, I was just nice to them. I was just doing my job. I was just being myself. And you, you're you getting opportunities for it. You know, and I think as a kid growing up in the inner city, growing up in South Central LA and Compton, um, you're not exposed to that mentality because it's kind of a dog eat dog world. You know what I mean? It's kind of survival of the fittest. Like you got to right. get in where you fit in. Um, and as I've grown up and as, you know, and I've matured and I've been more cultured and I've seen more, um, that's totally true. You know, it's, it's all about 
being yourself, being authentic, being able to to recognize opportunities and take advantage of them. But just just I I don't think people um, give themselves enough credit. You know, I think everybody's mm-hmm. unique and special in their own way, and and they sometimes feel like they have to be somebody else to to, to thrive and shine in this world. And you don't. Right. You know, there's there's a gazillion ways to skin a cat, and everybody is has their own special trait about them. And I think that's what we need to be more focused on, not focused on, Hey man, I need to be like this guy. I mean, need to mm. fit in this box. I need to be like this person to really just find your niche, find what you do well and shine in that role. Mm. Appreciate that advice. Let me transition while I got you here for a few more minutes of football on the field. You watched your team. You're now former team, the San Francisco 49ers. And we'll get into you in a second and where you're going to end up. But they drafted a quarterback last night in Trey Lance. What kind of message should we all receive from the fact that the San Francisco 49ers traded three first-round picks weeks earlier, moved up to the number three overall pick to draft a kid out of North Dakota State? who basically has got a few games under his belt. What should that say to all of us about the San Francisco 49ers moving forward? That, they're, that they're, they want to be a contender for a long time. You know, they want to be a contender. They want to be in the fight. They want to be uh, a franchise that, that is competing for championships, um, not just this year, not just next year, but for a long time coming. And I think they believe that Trey Lance is the answer going forward. I think um, his dynamic – Athletic ability is 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 obviously something that that Kyle values, but it's it's not even that. It's just the subtleties, the subtleties of his play action, the subtleties of of uh, his his disguises and how he hides the ball, and then he makes his decision. He he's not sitting there and saying, "Man, what's 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 out there? What's out there? What's out there?" And then taking mm. big hits. He's not turning the ball over. He's very efficient. All these things fit into Kyle's system. So when you see Debo Samuel's coming in motion. It's a lot. It, you're going to see a lot of the same stuff you see in his highlight tape: a fake, a play action here, a look this way, and then him rolling this way to just throw back. Even the mm. fullback was number 44. Kyle wow. Hughes check is 44. Like it's going to a lot of the stuff is going to look exactly the same. And I'm not sure he even starts this year because mm. Jimmy's still there, and Jimmy has a great command of that offense, and he's a great player um, in his own right. But I think in the future. I think mobility was something that Kyle really valued and and wanted to see from his quarterback, and he got it. But if you're Jimmy G, what should this say to you, and should you want to be there when a team traded three picks just to get get your successor? What what should that say to Jimmy G? I, I mean, you. It, it, I don't know what it says. I mean, yeah, it's, right. it's it's it says they they believe he's the future. You know, I mean, I I think. I think Jimmy G's a, a great person and a great teammate, and he fully understands that. He was the first person to call Trey Lance when he got picked up. So I don't think mm. he's taking it personal. You know, football is, is, is a game. It's a performance-based business. And Jimmy G's performed well um, when he's been in there, but he's been, he's been banged up at times. And, you know, uh-huh. that's not anybody's fault in right. particular. You can't control injuries. But, right. um, but I think he has a lot of football left in him, and I think he, he understands that he's going to continue to put it on tape. He's going to continue to lead his men until – He's not at the helm anymore. By the way, it didn't slide by me that the draft just took place last night and you already knew that Jimmy G had reached out to Trey Lance. That just shows how connected you are, Richard Sherman. It just fly over my head. <laughs> What's going on with you? Where are you going to end up playing football next year? Because I know you're not finished playing. I know you're on the board of directors now. Big time opportunities. Money's coming your way too. All that's true. But I know you ain't finished playing just yet. What's the future of Richard Sherman looking like right now? It's, 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 you know, it's, it's on pause. Um, you know, I got to wait through, wait through his draft process. Obviously the first round, a lot of teams got corners. Some teams didn't get the corners they wanted, you know? And, and I think once this draft process completes, my phone will ring a little more with people who expected to get a guy and didn't get the guy they wanted. You know, I'm not as in control as I was, you know, at, at 33, you know, it's right. just like, it doesn't matter what you put on tape. It's like, ah, Father Tom is undefeated. So, you know, Mm -hmm. just we're going to go with the young guy. It doesn't matter what accolades you have, what you put on tape, the numbers. um, It's just age sometimes. And and so I just got to continue to stay in shape, continue to stay ready. Uh, Obviously, a return to San Francisco isn't out of the cards. Um, I've had conversations with Seattle. I've had conversations with the Saints, um, Mm -hmm. the Raiders. 
And, mm-hmm. you know, we just got to wait to see how things play out. You know, I'm what about Pittsburgh? And, and doing everything I can. What, what, what about Pittsburgh? I'm a Steelers fan. <laughs> what about, what, what's wrong with Pittsburgh, Richard Sherman? I mean, they can, I'm tired. Listen, they're gifted, but I'm tired of all of these short corners. I need a corner with it with some height. How, how about Pittsburgh? What about them? They, they ain't call. I can't make them call. You know, I can call them. I, I, you know, I, 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 got the call, I got to call Mike T. You wouldn't mind being in Pittsburgh? You wouldn't mind? Do you, I, I'll call Mike T. I got to get on the phone with him and Kevin Co- uh, Keith Colbert. I, they got to do something, man. Him and Kevin Colbert. They got to do something. I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of the a- AFC North. You know, it's a good division. I'd, I'd like Pittsburgh. It's cold. I'd right. have to bring my winter clothes. But, you know. Well, don't act like it's warm in Seattle. It ain't that warm in Seattle. <laughs> I mean, don't, don't act like it's that warm in the Bay Area. Bay Area got New York weather, man. Come on, you used to, you, you can deal with it. And it rains less, and it rains less there than it does in the Pacific okay. Northwest. All right? Okay, I, you selling it right now. You selling I, it. I'm hanging up with you, and I'm going to call Pittsburgh. I'm going to call Pittsburgh, Richard Sherman. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm proud of you, man. Keep doing your thing, man. Board of Directors, I like that. I like that a lot. Keep it going. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you having me on. I'm thankful for the opportunity. I'm thankful for the platform. You're doing a fantastic job as always. And and once I'm done playing, you know, I'm just going to call you up and ask for advice because I'm trying to get in that industry. Please ask me for advice. I'm going to be asking you for advice. You're the one making money. You're the one making money, Rich. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.